Welcome back, and I've got something to show you guys. The new TID Radio H3. This thing is tiny, but it packs a massive punch. Let's dive in and take a look at the features and see if this is worth your time. First off, let's talk about the speaker on this thing. I am truly impressed. For the size of it, it sounds incredibly good. In fact, it sounds better than the H8. And the H8 is my everyday carry. It is the one radio I really, really like. And I might replace it. Part of the reason why is, is that this little radio sounds so freaking good. The mic on this, is really good as well. Now, there's there's a couple things here. I found that with radios, especially HTs, if the mic sounds bad, nine times out of 10, you gotta drill out the little tiny mic hole. So you get in there with a drill bit. If you're really adventurous, you could just straight drill into that with a drill and just be super, super careful. That will improve your audio substantially. But what I noticed is, is right out of the box is that this hole is bigger. Now that I'm convinced that TID Radio is listening to us, I want to get the same kind of speaker and mic into my H8 and with the same USB programmable features, which we're gonna cover in one moment. About those buttons, here's the thing, is that the difference between the H8 and the H3 is pretty massive. And these buttons here, you can press with your fingers. These buttons here, they're manageable, but just, I find myself having to use the very tippy point of my finger. Now, if you're one of those people that's blessed with the hands of Shrek, this radio is not gonna be for you. But, if you do have the hands of Shrek, and you've got one of these, have I got a solution for you. The new patent pending Lego minifig hand for ham radio. The reality is, is that nine times out of 10, at least, in my case, is that I've programmed the radio and I'm only using the up and down buttons and those I can figure out with my thumb. So it's a minor inconvenience given what you're getting in this tiny little package. Huge win is that it is USB chargeable. But if you all take a quick look, you're gonna notice that there's a USB adapter on here as well. I'm not sure if this charges or not. I'll, I, I haven't checked it, but you can program via that cable. So now you no longer need to have that Motorola cable that everybody has to fit into here with the USB and have to spend extra money. You just need a USB cable to program this. You can program it via Chirp or the Odemaster system that they have. The programming system they have is not all that great, but I have seen it improve over the last, say, six months or so. I'd be willing to bet in about a year or so that it's gonna be a pretty robust system. And, 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 see that blue button? You know what that means? Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth programmable. I'm not gonna go into the programming of how to do it with Chirp or Oldmaster and stuff like that. That's up to you to go look on the YouTubes for this. If you do need a programming tutorial, let me know in the questions down below. Price point, here's the thing. This thing is dirt cheap and you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it at TID Radio and it easily competes with the UV5R. It has 10 times the features of the UV5R for a similar price. Now the battery's small and it's not gonna last you very long. Not as long as, say, one of these big bad boys. But for using it during a week, I charged it up and I've turned it on and off when I'm in my car commuting back and forth to the shop and occasionally in the evenings and then going on to a net. And this radio has managed a week on a single chart. Mileage may vary if you're using this fairly heavily. I see though no reason why it wouldn't last a day. And that's no worse than your cell phone. So maybe, I don't know. You, you tell me whether that's something that's super important to you. Is battery life a huge thing for you or not? Given that it's USB chargeable, you can just bring a battery pack with you and a cable. You should be good. I've run a test on spurious emissions. Keep in mind that I am the rookie, but I've seen other people test this radio online and 
everybody seems to think that it's okay. There's some of the original first versions that are not all that great and they do have some spurious emissions, but for me, this radio seems to check out. On the two meter band, you might notice there's one spike, but it does settle down quite quickly. So I would say that these spurious emissions are something that are acceptable. And from what I understand is that that new firmware and the new models have almost zero spurious emissions. Also, keep in mind, that this doesn't have the same power output as the H8. The H8, from what I understand, has seen about eight watts out. This one here, I think maxes out at four or five watts. If you're gonna do a Summits on the Air or POTA or something like that, you need those couple extra watts, then you need a better radio. But if you're gonna do something where this is sort of like your urban traveler or something to use within the city or within your town, it's something that's compact and efficient and great to just like literally throw in a pocket. So I don't know, I kinda of like it. There you go. The TID Radio H3, I, I recommend it. I, I really seriously think that this is a Baofeng killer, and I think you should be kind of watching for that. Don't forget to bell the icon and the thing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell icon and all that other stuff. Hopefully I'm not having a stroke. <laughs> Anyways, this is Ben, VE6SFX, and I'm going to clear this channel.